Hey, it's Michelle Walker Wade coming with a Get Mobilized moment. I have this one thought I want to share with you, and it's a thought about servant leadership. We hear the words or the phrase servant leadership, uh, but I think this is one of my favorite definitions of servant leadership. Uh, servant leadership, defined by Robert K. Greenleaf, has, be has become the approach many businesses are taking in defining, listen to this, a new form of leadership based on service rather than hierarchical controls. Servant leadership, according to Greenleaf, is about servants first and leaders drive second versus leaders drive first and service second. Okay, so who is the leader? The leader is the person who's at the top of that organization or the top of that department or the top of that program. That's the leader. A leader has something that's driving them. Why would anyone, anyone choose to be a leader of any organization or uh, any project? Most of the time, there's something about the outcome of that project that the leader is, um, that is very dear to the leader, that is very important to that particular leader. Um, or the leader uh, believes in whatever it is so much that they want to be able to lead the project or lead the organization to um, achieve that ex expected end. So the leader is driven by something, but uh, now he has to lead a team of people who will help him or her reach that expected end. And so what happens so often is the leader's drive is the only thing that's driving everyone. Um, and you know it works sometimes, but again, if you watch a previous video about empowering the people who work for you, who work with you, your volunteers, uh, your employees, if you're going to empower them, one of the best ways you can do that as the leader is instead of trying to motivate um, your staff of volunteers and employees with what has what drives you, some the another approach would be to serve them, to serve them from a leadership role. Now, don't don't forget you're the leader, but you serve them in a way that again makes them um, feel empowered makes them feel like they have a role and then what ends up happening is each individual volunteer or staff member whatever innately drives them they'll put that particular uh, talent resource to work moving uh, towards the ultimate goal which is still the vision of the service or the uh, the end outcome of the, the project, but what drives them is what makes them feel most fulfilled about that particular um, outcome. And not just the leader's drive, not what makes the leader feel good, but what is it that makes me as a volunteer member um, uh, really want to see this particular outcome achieved. And so then the leader now has to serve the volunteer staff or the employed staff in achieving their goals. And as the staff members goals are achieved, now all still working towards the same ultimate outcome, but each one again has something different that drives them. The leader lets what drives each individual, um, what drives each individual, the leader uh, serves that in that person, serves that need in that person, and propels that person to fulfill their own goal and their own need and their own drive. And everything uh, done drives towards the ultimate goal of the product or the project, the ultimate outcome of the project. It's different because it's different than just the leader continually just to, trying to drive his own um, desire into people because it kind of it when that happens uh, the leaders drive can sometimes work um, against uh, the drive and in the individual because it's just it may be something ju that just isn't that important to that person or that just doesn't click with them uh, but when if the project is large enough if it's vast enough 
uh, if the outcome of it is um, comprehensive enough, um, most people will find something about that project that drives them. And the leader again has to know what is driving, why is this person involved in this project? What's important to that person, this particular person about this project? Okay, now as the leader that I know why this is important to you, how can I take what's important to you and help uh, channel it or drive it towards the total outcome of this uh, project so that it, it's achieved? Um, that's a different way of leadership it's not a top-down approach, it's servant leadership. And I'm telling you, it gets results. Uh, it may not be as quick as uh, typical top-down leadership. Typical top-down leadership may um, reach that end goal a little bit quicker, but what happens is it doesn't stick because the people who then need to support it um, they just didn't get any fulfillment out of it and so they'll easily um, leave and go on to the next thing and then there's no one to support now that we've achieved our goal we can't maintain it um, but with ser servant leadership the volunteer staff and the employed staff have put so much of their own self into the final product that they'll tend to stick with it once it reaches where it's going and then um, the project or the goal or the outcome is then maintained just by the drive of the people, not by the drive of the leader. So again, my statement from a previous video, if you as the leader, you take care of the people, the people will take care of the service, and then the service will take care of the profits. All right, you have a great day. I hope to see you soon. This is Michelle Walkaway.